Nobody wants this. Well, is it true? What's up, Netflix fans? A brand new 10 episode romantic comedy series on the platform, 30 minutes each. Is it worth your time? I'm Joanne. I'm Noah. Did you know there's a rabbi here? No shit. Yeah. Where? He has a beard, and he was definitely judging me. Sounds like a rabbi. <laughs> so an agnostic podcast host and an unconventional rabbi on the rebound walk into a party. When they walk out together, the unlikely pair, Joanne and Noah, well, they can tell that there's something going on between them. This stars Kristen Bell and Adam Brody. I knew nothing about this show. To be honest with you, I saw the premise and the genre. And I just thought what I always think with a lot of Netflix movies and shows, it just, is it gonna get it right? Because I'm absolutely fine if I'm watching a romantic comedy and it's familiar or I've seen it before. That's not what it's all about. It's all about, do you feel the chemistry between the two actors? Are the side characters charming? Is this story cohesive? And if it's not, are there at least elements there to get us excited for season two? And off the bat, after one episode, I sat back and said, all right, these two characters are really charming. Really charming. Noah is maybe the most unconventional rabbi character I've ever seen in a series like this because the way that he lives his life beyond what's going on in the temple is essentially what you'd expect from any guy his age. His sense of humor, his verbiage, the way he utilizes certain aspects of his charm and his good looks. I mean, the guy is... He's a good looking guy, but he's also ridiculously smooth. He's just coming out of a relationship that he definitely wasn't happy is. And we just get a tease of that or a taste of that in the first episode. And then some things that happen along the way to where it all always goes back to her because there's a lot of jealousy there, but there's also a big history. When you have a big history, it's hard to get away from that. Kristen Bell's character is also really charming. She just seems like a fun person to be around. You want to be around her. You want to spend time with her. I'm talking Noah and the audience. And Joanne has a podcast with her sister. It's a sex podcast, something that's going to make a lot of people feel uncomfortable. And that's such an unconventional thing when she meets this rabbi and the rabbi is like, yeah, I know I'm going to have to convert her to Judaism eventually, but we'll, in the meantime, we'll make it work. You sure about that? You sure about that? I love the fact that he's super smooth and Joanne goes and tells everyone that he's super smooth. Her mom, who's in an unconventional place right now in her life, and her dad, who used to be with her mom, obviously, but now he's gay, so that makes for a very fun and often hilarious dynamic when they get together with the family. But she goes and tells them, hey, this guy, I mean, he's making moves, moves that I've never seen before. He's telling me to put down my stuff, just to, just to gaze in my eyes. And I'm sitting here going... All right, this guy's got it. I, do I have my notepad? I mean, I'm married, so I don't need it, but... Okay, guy, settle down. But the show is called Nobody Wants This because in the beginning, nobody wants it. Joanne and Noah, they don't even know if they want it because they know what's going to happen eventually. They also know that they shouldn't really be together. Joanne's talking about her past relationships. At one point, she calls someone, and the guy on the phone's like, you know you're a terrible person, right? You don't learn too much about her history, her dating history. Uh, it's essentially just kind of the place that she is in her life. She feels like she needs something like this. The good guy, if you will, but the good guy with a lot of charm and <clears throat> riz. Did I say it right? Boom! Look, having two leads that look and feel as if they have a ton of chemistry is awesome. But when it comes down to it, you have to have supporting characters that have a little something extra to allow you to stick around. Morgan, who is Joanne's sister, and Sasha, who is Noah's brother, are kind of, I don't want to say the outcasts of the family, but they're in similar positions in their own very different family, and they form a very interesting relationship, friendship, and bond to where by the end of the season, they're telling each other secrets and it becomes a very engaging friendship. You just really want to spend more time with them, with each other. And it's not even like a big romantic thing because Sasha is married. And I think this show had the opportunity to make it into something more than it was, but I'm glad it didn't. I'm glad it showed restraint there and just made them really fun people to be around. And every time we're around them, it's fantastic. I mean, down to the moments with Sasha and his daughter, and he's just trying to give her advice, and she's not wanting to listen to it, his advice, but it's actually pretty good advice. I'm like, this is genuine, 
But he's also hilarious. And, and Timothy Simmons has always been someone who I believe is hilarious. You've got Justine, who we know from Succession. And both of these actors are fantastic in their roles. Going beyond that, we have the group of friends over here, the group of friends over here, the parents who are on both sides. Like I said, her parents, very interesting. But his parents, they, they like the old girlfriend better. They don't want anything to do with the new one, especially the fact that she's not even converted yet. That's a problem. But in the meantime, Adam Brody's Noah, he's got his career, his life lifestyle to focus on, and he's trying to be the top dog. Well, he doesn't know if he can do that because to do that, you can't be with someone who hasn't converted. And so there are obstacles and issues that you know we're going to run into eventually. And as the story goes, we do. And it feels like every episode or at least every other episode, they run into some kind of obstacle that isn't the big obstacle. But by the time you get into the big show, well, we have to address those things. And so the creative spin on a show like this is you have to make every episode deliver on something that causes a little bit of drama, even if it's down to a secret that is silly in theory, but it actually works in execution. And I found every episode to be engaging. There's the episode titled The Ick, where Noah is like the perfect guy, but all of a sudden she she gets the ick, which, you know, there's a guy on TikTok who takes notes on all the things that give girls the ick, and it's something as simple as like eating a sandwich gives girls the ick. But I like how the show plays on that silly concept and understandably kind of knows what it's doing and how he dresses, how he's trying to impress her parents. And I found that episode to be really funny. I found this show to be really funny. Like, across the board. Yeah, the romance is great, but it's funny. And that's going to keep a lot of people engaged. It honestly reminds me of some of these classic sitcoms that we used to get on cable, and uh, less so what we're used to getting on Netflix. It feels almost nostalgic. And when you spend a lot of time with characters like this, you want to go back to them. I binged this nonstop. I didn't stop. Because I wanted to keep going back because even if a character is not charming, they have something about them that's interesting. And I just, I enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed getting to spend time with them. It has like that new girl feel to it to where you just, you just want to be with them for a while to see what happens. That's important. And going into this, knowing nothing about it other than the leads, which I liked, I didn't think that would be the case. Why? Why? What? And just the memorable moments from their relationship. You've got the secret box that she knows she shouldn't look at that's full of his ex-girlfriend's secrets. You've got her trying to win over his friends, but more importantly, his friends, girlfriends, and wives. That's a funny episode. They're in the store trying to buy the sex toy. Something extremely awkward happened. That was hilarious. And then the dinner table scene and sequence with Noah's mom I, that's just what happens is so unexpected. But again, that's the creativity. And yeah, you could look at it as, okay, I've seen these things before. I've seen these tropes, but it's all about the charm of the characters. I was extremely charmed, fully into this story. And the way that it leaves off is both satisfying, but kind of, all right, well, I really need to see more of this to be fully satisfied. I believe that's a good thing. Some people will be stressed out and frustrated by the ending. And admittedly, it did get there very fast. We're at the final episode, and I'm like, oh, wow, we got here quick. But then it ends off, and I'm sitting back thinking, I hope people watch this. I believe they will, because Kristen Bell's a big name. But I hope they watch it, because I really want a season two, and three, and four. Not five, not six, not seven. And before I give you my score... There we go. I would love to know your thoughts on this. What's the best, like, romantic comedy movie or TV show on Netflix? Is there a series like this that I haven't seen? I'd love a recommendation. Also, if you like these Netflix reviews, if you want me to review more things like this, dropping that thumbs up really helps this channel. I appreciate everyone who always leaves their support. The name of the game here is Charm, and everything about this series is ridiculously charming. Bell and Brody's chemistry is through the roof, but it is the supporting cast that cements this as the next great rom-com series. I know that's a big thing to say, and we're just into one season of this, and we don't even know if we're getting a season two, but I believe this is on the path to be a great show. I just think it's a great season, even if we don't get a season two. Uh, these characters are awesome. I did not think I was going to be raving about this show. It's ridiculous that I am, but here we are, baby, and I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, so, what'd you think? Leave your thoughts. Stay tuned, because Megalopolis... Is coming soon.